Hey guys, it's Leanne. It's Lena. Welcome back to our channel. Um, for this week, we wanted to do a second part to our video we released last week about why we left the Catholic Church and we wanted to expose more of the faulty foundations of the Catholic Church and just give more reason for why we left. So let's get into it. So as we've been maturing in our faith and really been getting rooted in scripture, we've discovered that Catholicism is actually a counterfeit of real Christianity. And these are some of the main reasons. So as a believer in Christ, we all know that we're supposed to turn to scripture as the ultimate authority for where we find truth and just to be able to use that as the foundation for our belief systems. But as we said in our previous video, the Catholic Church really creates a structure and an institution where the people are hyper dependent on the priests and church leadership to be able to access God and to be able to communicate with God. And that's not really biblical. And one of the main reasons why they even set up this type of structure is because of a total misinterpretation of scripture. So the Catholic Church really builds their foundations upon the scripture in Matthew 16, 18. Uh, and this, and just to summarize it in that specific uh, chapter, in that specific verse, is when Jesus is asking Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter responds, you are the Christ. And then Jesus uh, in response says that upon this rock, I will build my church. How the Catholic Church takes it, they believe that Jesus saying that to Peter meant that he was saying that Peter is the rock of the church. And then they built the institution of the Pope around that misinterpretation and twisting of scripture. The reality is Jesus was not saying that Peter was the rock. He was just saying that whoever believes and professes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ and the savior, their house is built upon a rock, that their life is on the rock because Jesus is the rock. But, um, that's completely twisted in the Catholic Church. Yeah. And that's how they built the system of the Pope, the bishops, and the priests. So because they believe that Peter was the first Pope in the Bible, they also came up with this belief called papal infallibility, which in our last video we explained is the belief that they think that the Pope is never wrong in his teaching. But if you actually read the scriptures, Peter made a lot of mistakes because he denied Jesus three times and then he also told Jesus that he's not going to need to suffer. And Jesus told Peter, get behind me, Satan, because he knew the assignment that was on his life. So this idea that the Pope is not ever wrong or that the Pope can't make mistakes is completely false because Peter made mistakes in the Bible too. One of the other main reasons why the Catholic Church is built on really faulty foundations is the fact that it's really not built on scripture like they proclaim that it is. It's really rooted in traditions and man-made traditions that they came up with. So one of the biggest ones is the whole ceremony of mass. So basically, so if, you've, if you're not Catholic and you don't know anything about Catholicism. Each Sunday, Catholics go to what's called Mass, which is their church service. The priest pretty much um, does a whole ceremony where he pretty much tries to recreate what Jesus did on the cross on an altar. So what Jesus did on Calvary when he laid down his life and died on the cross and resurrected from that. The priest believes that during this time, he can literally call on a resurrected Jesus and call him down from heaven to re-sacrifice him on the altar. And that's a major problem because that pretty much is making a mockery out of what Jesus finished on the cross. Like he said in scripture, it is finished. And for a whole congregation of people to continue to repeat what he did on the cross is pretty much stating that they don't believe what Jesus did was complete on the cross and they have to keep having a sacrifice. And then they believe that they can physically turn what they use as the wine and the 
wafer into the physical blood and body of Jesus Christ. So in this whole ceremony, they believe that the wafer and the wine physically becomes the actual flesh and blood of Jesus. And that's like one of the main ways that you receive Jesus. And there's, you can't really receive Jesus any other way except through that. So this type of practice is actually rooted, when we did our research, rooted in and connected to a similar practice that Egyptians did to their sun god, um, where they literally took an unleavened piece of bread and they blessed it and supernaturally turned this piece of unleavened bread into the flesh of their god that they worshipped. So that's just straight sorcery and witchcraft. And uh, even on the actual wafer that the Catholic Church uses for Eucharist, there's the there's three letters that are inscripted into the piece of the wafer, and it's I H S. And those letters are supposed to represent three Egyptian gods. So we say we worship Jesus, but is it really worshiping Jesus when it's really connected to Egyptian gods? Yikes. And another unbiblical practice in the Catholic Church is their worship of Mary. When we did our research, the reason why they honor Mary so much is because it's based off of one of their doctrines and their teachings that is found in the catechism. And when you look at the catechism, there is something called the 494 catechism, which says that Mary, without a single sin to restrain her, she became the cause of salvation for herself and the whole human race. So basically, Jesus Christ is not the savior. Mary is the Catholic church savior. And it's pretty evident in the prayers and Hail Mary's and the, the rosary where they really devote everything to worshiping Mary. So they believe that Mary is sinless, but Jesus is the only person in the Bible that's without sin. So the fact that they made up that she was also without sin and this is where they got the belief that because she was sinless, she just ascended into heaven. In the Bible, it says this, wages of sin are death and that we as humans, we pass away from this life. But the idea that she was sinless as well has caused them to create another lie that she didn't die. She just simply ascended straight to heaven. And, um, and please understand that we don't say this out of any judgment. It's just really us trying to wrap our head around where these doctrines came from because there's like no biblical foundation to it. You can't find that in scripture. Another reason why we left the Catholic Church is because just the fact that they taught that you have to do all of these works in order to be accepted by God and just have to do a bunch of rituals in order to gain access to God. We never agreed with that. Scripture says that it is not through works so that no one can boast. So just the institution and the practices of the Catholic Church really make people feel like they always have to keep striving in order to access God. And um, that just makes people feel like they'll never be able to be accepted by God. And that's why a lot of Catholics feel so distant and disconnected from God. And a lot of times they feel very uncertain whether or not they are in right standing with God. That's not a good way to live. Like we're supposed to have the hope of the good news that Jesus Christ already paid the price for our sins. This just creates a spirit of fear and doubt and just like a lot of oppression. The point of the gospel is to be able to share good news. And it's not really good news if you led to believe that you have to keep going through these cycles and rituals uh, in order to even receive any salvation. And that's not to say that we are to stay in sin. We are supposed to repent and we are supposed to turn. But just just their overall traditions and rituals is not, it's not it. And some scripture to back up what we're talking about regarding the good news. Galatians 1 and 9 says, I say again, 
what we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news than the one you welcomed, let that person be cursed. So again, if you hear anyone teaching that you have to do any extra work in order to be saved, like if it's different than being able to be saved through faith and by grace, then you should be cautious that that's not the real good news. We highlight all these faulty doctrines and ideas to really drive home the point that because the Catholic Church is preaching a different good news and not the real Jesus, it's a church of the Antichrist, which is in, is in direct opposition to what the true gospel of Jesus Christ is supposed to be. Just the whole mind control and authoritarianism and just the deception behind what is being promoted in the Catholic Church is really causing people to be led astray and drawn into pretty much a cult. And in Acts 20, Paul had warned the people in specifically in verses 29 to 30, he says, I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. So he had already been warning about false teachers arising uh, to draw people away from the truth. And that really is the foundation of the Catholic Church and the institution of the Catholic Church because it's really founded on faulty foundation and it draws people away from the truth and away from Jesus Christ and draws people to worship, to worship Mary, to worship saints and literally wooden statues. And that's just not biblical. And anything that draws people away from the truth is a cult. And how we even came to this revelation in the first place was just like God himself, just taking us through a journey of really studying the scriptures for ourselves. Like even people in the Bible, they studied the scriptures to test the teachers of the scriptures to make sure that they were telling the truth. So we, as people should also be testing people and making sure that we like really have something to check them so that we're not led astray and just follow after these preachers and teachers blindly because it's really easy to be deceived if you don't know. And if you're not rooted in a source of truth and the source of truth should always line up with the scriptures. It's just some more scripture to talk about being led astray and the Antichrist. First John 2 and 18 says, Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard the Antichrist is coming and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. First John 2 and 21 says, So I'm writing you not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an Antichrist. And then the last scripture, 1 John 2 and 26 says, I'm writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray, but you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true for the spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you remain in fellowship with Christ. So this just really drives home the fact that you need to study the word for yourself. You need to study the scriptures and test everything for yourself. Don't just take people at their word because there will be lots of people that will come around you to present things that sound good but have no backing. So it's just really important, especially in this day and age where there's so many voices and influences trying to tell people, oh, I have the way to go or I have the answer. No, like you gotta, you have to be in prayer yourself, study the scriptures yourself and be rooted yourself so that you're not easily led astray. And that's what we've learned over the years is to really know what we believe and get rooted in a firm foundation ourselves so that we won't be led into cult-like institutions. In this day and age, there's just a lot of leaders rising up trying to build up cults. So it's just really important to guard yourself. Also, we want to encourage you, like the scripture says, you don't need anyone to teach you. If you have the Holy Spirit, he's always gonna give you that discernment to give you a sense like, 
there's something off about this. Like he's the one that will teach you and lead you into all truth. Because like we said, we didn't come to any of this revelation on our own. It's when we fully like sought God for ourselves and asked him to please show us the truth that he did it on his own. And he led and he guided us throughout every step. And when you ask him, can you please be my teacher? Can you send me your Holy Spirit to shine light on all the truth? He will always do that for you and he'll bring revelation to you. So be encouraged. Like it can be overwhelming, but when you have the Holy Spirit and when you have a relationship with God, he's always gonna lead you in the way to go. So we hope that this gave some more revelation and understanding to whoever may be just curious or in this journey of trying to rediscover where where you're standing. We hope that the knowledge that we've been able to share would help you in your walk because it says in the word that it's through knowledge that the just are delivered. So, and it was definitely uh, us learning for ourselves that we were delivered from a lot of deception. We just want to be able to continue to help others who are, who are susceptible to being deceived. We have other resources down below to just go in a deeper dive behind the things that we mentioned in this video about the faulty foundations of the Catholic Church. So we'll link all those resources down below. There's a video, there's a book, all that good stuff. So we hope you all found this video valuable and uh, please let us know if there's anything that stuck out to you and we would love to hear what resonated with you. And we'd also like to hear what else you're interested in learning more about because we're always continuing to learn. And we hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you guys in the next video.